We should be live. All right, we're live. What's happening, everybody? Welcome to Hyundai Hangouts, episode 300. 300. We've been doing this uh, for the past 300 wow. weeks. And uh, it's pretty cool. Thank you guys for being here. I'm really excited to be here. Today is the 12th of August. And uh, we have some really good stuff for you guys. But before we dive into that, let's do the uh, usual weather report across the globe at this point. What's going on, Marco? How are you doing? What's up, man? I put furniture in the background for, for context. I didn't want just people to think that it was a screen. So if I, if I do this, if I do this, if I go here, I, it, it's real. It's not, not a fake background. It's sunshine, 365, it's 24 seven. It's po fu, come get some. If you're not there, you can't get any, not our fault. Look it's in Groundhog the mirror. Day. Look in the mirror, this is Groundhog Day for me. Get in where you fit in. That's awesome. What's up, Chris? What, how you doing, man? Doing good here. Nothing much up here. Um, sunny summer. Um, I don't know, like mosquitoes everywhere. That's the negative part of it. But other than that, I can't complain. Things are good. Where, where are you at? Where are you at? Uh, at my parents' place. Nice. OK, awesome, awesome. Construction up, work Ali? here. Uh, I'm good. I was trying to get the silo training done, the website silo training done for today for the process street doc that I've shared uh, for the last few weeks, but I'm not done with it. So I got, I got a good jump on it, but it's, it's, it's not ready yet. So I, I didn't even add it to the process street doc yet, but by next Wednesday, it will be done. I promise guys. <laughs> so That's awesome. All right, cool. What's up everybody. Welcome to Hyundai Hangouts. If you're, if this is, this is the first time you're watching this, thank you. Welcome. If you have been following us for a while, thank you as well for the support. The main goal, the idea of these calls is to help you with anything and everything that has to do with digital marketing, SEO, growing your agency, making, your, making more money, growing your business, whatever you want to do, you're welcome to post your questions at uh, semanticmastery.com slash HD questions. And we will go in through those. Now, before we dive into, into questions, we have a couple of quick announcements. Number one is that Pofu Live 2020, which should be called Pofu Online 2020. But anyways, that's going to be a thing. It's awesome. It's going to be awesome. We have some really good guest speakers lined up and you should head over to pofulive.com to get your ticket. We're also going to be doing some good stuff for the VIP uh, guys that will join us. And usually what happens with Pofu Live is that the stuff that's being shared in Pofu Live, it's never shared anywhere else. You know, so that is something that you want to consider if you want to get into some of the good stuff that we have when it comes to SEO, digital marketing, agency building, mindset. So everything happens there. So go to pofulive.com to, um, to actually get your ticket. Uh, Bradley, I believe we had a pretty cool kick-ass webinar this week, right? didn't we? We did. We had a, pre a webinar with Jeremy from Press Advantage um, on Monday. And I'm actually trying to create a pretty link for that right now so that I can just paste that but uh yeah go to smshort.link slash press advantage i'm going to put this up on the screen in just a few minutes guys um but yeah it was really really good it you know we were uh press advantages and press releases are an integral part of what we do we we, we use them really for for just about everything uh it's it's really a, a part of the seo shield and press advantage has been a great partner for us because you know they Jeremy's developed a lot of stuff into the platform for us um, at, you know, at, at our request, essentially. And it, so it works really, really well with our methods. And, you know, every so often he would open up a subscription plan where you can go get your own subscription plan to the Press Advantage platform as opposed to buying them as one offs from MGYB. And I've always recommended to people that if you're doing a lot of press releases that you should have your own subscription to Press Advantage and, you know, perhaps even some other um press release distribution uh, services. There's a few of them out there that are really good, Press Advantage being one of them. So, you know, every now and then he'll open up an offer, but uh, there's there's was a really good offer that he, the last time he closed it down, he said he wasn't gonna open it up again, but he did open it up one more time, slightly different than what it was the previous time, but it's, it's an unlimited plan. So there's two plans essentially, and you, you can catch it in the replay guys, but there's the three done for you, uh, press release subscription. So three press releases per month written for you. And you get all the benefits of having your, you know, access to the dashboard and 
creating your own organization pages and uh, retargeting pixels and all the things that you can't get when you're just buying them from a reseller, such as MGYB. But then there's the unlimited plan, the five written for you or done for you press release per month, plus unlimited write it yourself. When I say write it yourself, really, it's uh, there's a you can have press advantage still write them for you and you just pay per press release to be written, which is 50 bucks. So it really comes out to be five written for you plus unlimited press releases for an additional $50 per press release to have them write it and distribute it. And that's um, that that plan was opened up and he swears up and down <laughs> that this is the last time that it'll be available. So again, I'm going to put this up on the screen here in a minute and I'll post it in the chat, but it's uh, smshort.link slash press advantage will take you to the replay page. So you can watch the webinar if you'd like, or you can click through the buttons on that page to take you to the um, sign up for either but one of Brad, those plans. Go ahead. Brad, press releases don't work. They Brad, don't work. No. No, they, they don't, don't work. work. <laughs> so why are you telling people to buy press releases when all of the experts, gurus, what have you say press releases don't work? Why should people believe you and not the experts? Not that you're not an expert, but, but why, pray tell? Yeah, well, uh, you know, it's funny, but that's like the SEO is dead type articles that you read <laughs> yeah. on all the different blogs. You know, SEO is dead. And then what was it after? Uh, what was the most recent update that they said it was all dead because of? BERT. BERT. Yeah, the BERT update. Uh, SEO, as we know, it is now dead because of, uh, of the natural language processing built right into the, the algorithm, baked right into the algorithm. And whatever we've been hearing this shit for 10 years so <laughs> he's uh or what, or what he calls you neural matching and ai you can't beat ai and there's no way that you can outfox the experts at mountain view and 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 on and on and on i just uh, i'm sorry that you don't have it ready but that, that screenshot that you showed the other day with the traffic coming from your press releases is is, is like everybody just shut the fuck up you don't know what you're talking about that's right so I'm still yeah. trying to prepare this doc to put the links up, guys. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. By the way, if you want to get, if you want to get a lot of adult, uh, other stuff that shouldn't work, but it ends up working somehow magically, go to mgyb.co. Yeah. There's a lot of additional stuff that doesn't work there. <laughs> yeah. No, but in, in all seriousness, if you're, you know, you're an agency owner, you have clients, you should be busy building your agency, hiring people, training those people, getting more clients. So let us do the grunt work for you. Let us do the heavy lifting. Let us do the delivery for you. That's why we put together mgyb.co. So go to mgyb.co to get all of your fulfillment needs so that you can be happy that we're taking care of it. You have the experts working for you and you can turn around and build your business. So there you go. Awesome. Anything else, guys, before we jump into uh, questions? Winner Bradley's good to go? Uh, yeah, I'm pretty much good to go. I'm pasting this last link in chat right now. And there we go. Okay, sweet. Uh, let me grab the screen and we'll get right into it. I was multitasking. <laughs> all right, here we go. Okay, so first of all, this is what I was just pasted in chat, guys. Press advantage replay. Go to smshort.link slash press advantage. That will take you to the replay page. That's where you can watch the replay if you'd like, or if you'd just like to sign up, the buttons are right there underneath the video, okay? Uh, process Street Template. This is the one I've been talking about for the past couple of weeks, and I'm just gonna pull, pull this up one more time. This is, I, I've got the, I kind of mapped the silo out and I set up a, uh, so just so you guys know, this is basically a process. If you go to semanticmastery.com slash process, you can, view this process street template, which is what I call the worry or, you know, we call the worry list entity based SEO method. And so essentially it's just, it's the, it's the why, the why we do what we do uh, videos and, and links over where to get it done for you. Or if you want to learn the how there's links over to the training courses uh, or where you can find out how to do it. But really uh, you know, there's training in here for all these different, components, which is the foundation of everything that we do. But if we look at the website section, this is where I'm still waiting to update. Uh, you know, I, I was hoping to have it done by today, but uh, I did not get all the, I didn't get the training videos completed, but I did get 
a site up that I'm going to be using as the demo site to kind of show how both of these, both types of silo structures can be built, either a simple silo structure or a complex silo. And then there will be another follow-up video in, the, in this little series here about website silo architecture for the difference between physical and virtual silos. So that's all going to be in this one section here. If you have Process Street, as a, if you use that, like your own account, you can import the template and then you can run checklists from it that you can assign to VAs or to each project, for example, so that you can kind of run through and check the boxes off as you're setting up a new project. If you don't have Process Street, well, you don't need it. You can still view the template and still view all the different, um, you know, parts of it, okay? Like the training and that kind of stuff and the links are all there. So that should help you. And just as a quick teaser, this is the silo architecture um, setup that I'm going to be using as the example and the updated videos. Okay, we've got some training videos on how to set up simple and complex silo structures on our YouTube channel, but they're old and some of the methods have changed slightly. As I mean, the architecture is all the same, but you know, I, I don't use the uh, physical silo, which shows the, the, the structure in the permalink or the URL which would be the category slash post name permalink structure. I don't do that anymore. So there's some slight changes. It needs to be updated. That's what I'm going to be doing. And so you can see this would be like a simple silo. It's obviously I'm going to be doing it around tree service um, industry just because that's primarily all I work with anymore. Um, and in a complex silo structure. So just a little bit of a tease. I'll be making the uh, you know spreadsheet available guys plus the videos and all that inside of the process street doc. Um, so that you, you know, can, can, can walk through it and get a better understanding of how to set things up properly. Okay. So with that said, any guys, any comments on that guys, or should we just get right into questions? No, that was perfect. Go. Okay. Sweet. Let's get into it. All the questions posted today were posted or for today were posted today, which is rare. So that's kind of cool. Uh, first question, is there a WordPress theme you recommend or have an affiliate code for building lead gen sites and need different sidebars for each page? I believe you recommended Genesis Framework from Studio Press in the past. Gracias. Yeah, you know, it, that's what I was doing when I was doing mass page building stuff. Um, the Genesis Framework from Studio Press, but I don't really do any of that anymore and I haven't for some time. I, I may get back into testing some of that again, but it's not any going to be anytime soon because I've got some other projects that I'm working on. But if you're doing mass page stuff, that's what I used to use when I did it. But man, shit, it's been probably three years since I've done any mass page build stuff. Um, Marco, do you have any WordPress themes that you would recommend? Divi. We work Divi. a lot with Divi. Yeah. Genesis framework is really good. Uh, but, but really all of them, they, they all now, we get a lot from theme for us. Let, let me see if I, let's rewrite. We get a lot of themes from Theme Forest. I know that Divi isn't a Theme Forest theme that that it's uh, from somebody else, but it's really good. But any theme now comes with all kinds of different templates that you can use. They come like with like 40, 50 variations. Just a, a, a common one. I just go to, well, I go to Theme Forest. You go there, you get one, and, and then the variations that it come with that it comes with allows you to build several websites that that all look different. So get an extended license and you can use it all. Uh, even the free ones, you, you can, I mean, you, you can vary the sidebar. You can vary the placement of the sidebar, left, right, footer. So even those, it, it, it depends on how good you are, like with moving stuff around in WordPress. And if you don't really know WordPress, then everything is in YouTube anyway, guys. So you go to YouTube, get, get what, I don't know, 2020 is the latest uh, WordPress theme in there. So you go in there. Take a look, uh, see how to, how to, how to vary it, move the, the widgets, move the sidebars around, and you're good to go. Make it look any way you want. Now, just to be clear, I've been using ink themes for like my entire lead generation career. <laughs> um, they're not that like it's not super advanced like a lot of the Divi and, and page builders. However, you can, uh, I don't know if, if ink themes, they, I know they also promote uh, Elementor. The page builder which is a lot like divi or wp bakery and and all the different types of page builder plugins so that you can create kind of almost like um you know like elements and move elements around and all that kind of almost like a landing page builder would be for like click funnels for example so i know they have it but for most of the sites that i build guys because i'm just really familiar with ink themes because i've been using them literally for almost my entire career 
Um, and I, you know, I started doing a bunch of different theme types over the years. I've, I've played with um, Thrive. I always like Thrive, the Thrive, Thrive Architect and like all their different plugins and stuff. I've used them for quite a bit, quite a few projects. But when it comes down to just slapping up, when it comes down to just um, publishing lead gen sites quickly, I like to use Ink Themes themes. Uh, they have a lot of different templates. All their themes are very, are developed similarly so that once you become familiar with one of them, they're pretty much the functionality of all the different types of themes they have is very similar. And that's part of the reason why I like using them. Um, but again, that's just a personal preference. And it's only because I got tired of constantly trying to learn how to set up new you know, uh, WordPress sites that were with new theme developers, like, cause they all have their nuances, right? They're all have specific, you know, ways that they do things. And so I got tired of always constantly having to learn new themes. So I've kind of reverted back to just sticking to ink themes for lead gen sites. And since I'm primarily only doing tree service stuff now, other than existing clients, there's really no need for me to go through learning all that other shit for other page builders and everything. So just wanted to point that out. I, I use ink themes a lot. Okay. Good question. Next one. Oh, and by the way, you said, uh, she, uh, he, they need different sidebars for each page. Well, you can do that with pretty much any WordPress theme because there are plugins out there that, um, like custom sidebars, for example, I think that's the name of one of them. There's a ton of different plugins out there. Widget context is another one that I use. Um, but I think custom sidebars is one. Uh, that you can you can create all the different sidebar widgets or sidebars that you want and have different widgets plugged into them and you just assign them a name and then on each page or post that you publish there will be a selection like a drop down where you can select which sidebar you want to show um, or widget context is another thing that I use a lot where that's actually in the appearance widgets menu or that that you know that editor area where you can, for underneath each widget, you can assign when you want it to display, either by URL, by by slug, you know, by uh, or certain conditions, or show not show on certain conditions. So there's there's a ton of different ways to customize sidebars without it having to be a specific theme that gives you that functionality, right? Plugins will do that as well. Yeah, they, uh, there's one called Widget Logic that that I really like. Yeah, that's very much like Widget Context. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Fitz is up. What's up, Fitz? He says, good day, gents. Thank you for this forum to get real world actionable answers. Marco, if you don't mind, please drop the link for your charity so that, some, so that we can do some good while doing well. My question today is, do you send backlinks to the press releases first or to you, do you embed first and then back backlink to the embeds of the press release? I usually always start with links, guys. Um, that's just my own personal preference. I usually always hit everything with link building first, and then I'll do embed runs next. That's always like the second round of things will be embeds with links to the embeds. But that's, again, personal preference. I just always hit everything with link building first. Anybody else have a different approach? It, it doesn't matter, right? Because they, they both accomplish the same thing. So it's just a, uh, an individual preference. So whatever yeah. it is. Embeds work really well because it's iframes, and link building works really well because it's link building. And if you do the embeds and then the link building, you're accomplishing the same thing. The order is just a simple preference. There you go. Uh, next question. Hi, I was thinking about deleting my SE Nuke GSA licenses as, as I thought I would never have to use it anymore, but now I am thinking of running it once again. I will order contextual for the tier one assets like G site drive stack syndication properties. Uh, from us, MGYB. However, do you think it is safe to throw in any, as you say, kitchen sink spam links, um, pings, trackbacks, redirects, comments, etc., on those tier one assets with my own GSA tool? Or should I do these even worse than the contextual spam links at tier two for the safer approach? Well, again, our link building master, <laughs> uh, Daddy, uh, he's, you know, he always recommends doing contextual links. So uh, web 2.0, contextual web 2.0 links as tier one links to your tier one entity assets. So they're really tier two links to your money site, but they're, but since we don't build links other than through press releases and through our own blog content, do, do we, you know, and which goes out to the syndication network, since I don't build links directly to my money site outside of that, then when we say tier one links, they're tier one links to our tier one entity assets, if that makes sense. And he always uh, recommends doing 
um, contextual web 2.0 links as tier one. And if you're going to do tier two, he typically recommends a second tier of contextual web 2.0 links. And then if you're going to use like kitchen sink spam, GSA type links, whatever, that would be tier three. But we know through testing that we've been able to get, uh, you know, Marco and Rob have done some really, really spammy tests where they just hammered the, uh, this SEO shield with kitchen sink spam and all kinds of really, really poor quality links. And we're still able to get results on more than one occasion. But, um, you know, we, we always recommend that you stick with the, the better approach because who knows when, or when and if that could become toxic at some point, even to the SEO shield. What do, what do you think, Marco? Like, I, we said this before, and, and I don't know how many times we say this, right? Kitchen sink spam works. It does. We've proven it over and over again. We just had a recent, two, uh, two weeks ago, right, in, in RYS Academy Reloaded. Someone came in and said they threw a bunch of GSA fiber links at their project, whatever it was, and it worked. And we're telling you, yes, it does work. Yes, kitchen sink spam, garbage links, they work. But here's the point. If you can manage that with, with th the worst of links, imagine what you can do with a good backlink profile. Because at the end of the day, if you have a client or if you have something that's public and you hit it with garbage, that ha some of that garbage will index, it's going to show in the link profile and someone who's curious about the company is gonna go and look and find those. Do you want people finding those? Because we've said this before. I didn't, when we were doing the, the test on DC Plumber, I didn't want my, my kids around when I was looking at the backlink profile because some of those backlinks were, I mean, it was just trash. I mean, really trashy stuff, porn, the worst kind of porn that you can think of. So when, when you don't filter, when you, and when you don't take care of cleaning up the backlink profile, you're going to get those kinds of links, especially in GSA, especially in these templates, right? Especially in these things where, where they don't care where the backlink goes, it just goes. Now, if you can do that with those types of links, imagine what you can do when you tear your backlinks they're relevant, right? They're contextual. And then you tear them out and they're also contextual and relevant. How much more power can we generate if we do that than if we just simply say, I'm going to go on the cheap, hit it with GSA and get results. You get what you pay for. At the end of the day, you're going to get power. But do you want that kind of power? Do you want those kinds of links showing up in your backlink profile? That's the only warning that I would give you. If you don't care, if you just want to uh, test for test sake, th then by all means, just hammer it, hammer away. It doesn't matter. Don't forget press releases make really good links too. So uh, Fitz, what's up Fitz? He's, this is his second question. He says, now that Google is doing away with the classic Google sites, what should we do with the sites that were built for the RYS stacks? Convert them to new sites. They give you a, there's a great big banner at the top of them that says, you know that you uh you know with the uh, uh, it prompts you to basically convert it to a new new google site in fact i spent some time earlier this week converting several sites because i've always just worked in the the classic google sites whenever i would do theme mirror you know uh theme mirroring so the rys expansion is spent essentially and so i've actually spent some time this week going through several of my more recent projects and converting them to the new sites and it's, it's kind of cool because the new sites, as I, this is the first time this week is really the first time I started playing in the new site platform. And it's, it's very much like a page builder, right? And that you can drag, it's like a block, you know, a, a, a block page builder to where you, you can bring in different blocks and different elements and set up columns and, and all kinds of stuff. And so it's a lot like working with click funnels or Divi or Elementor or WP Bakery, all those different types of page builders now. Um, so it's, it's very intuitive. If you've ever done that kind of stuff with, uh, with any sort of page builders, it's, it's easy to work in. And, uh, they, I mean, it's even easier like there's just an embed function that would just, it's, it's real easy instead of having to go in to insert and gadgets and then select an iframe gadget and all that stuff. It makes it super easy. Um, so it's, it's actually really easy to work in there. I don't know why I avoided it for so long. <laughs> What's you got anything to comment on Marco? Uh, you know, this always gets me to smile and, and, and laugh. And, and guys, all that changed. The only thing that changed is we don't have classic Google sites anymore. That's it. Everything else is still available. The drive stack is still available. So copy paste is still available. Embed is still available on the new G site. 
So everything that we were doing on, on the classic sites is available on, on the G sites. It's just, it's just a little bit different. The user interface is different. It's more intuitive. Yeah. Like it, it, it's simpler. It's simpler to go and do things and it looks better and it's better for mobile. So thank you, Google. Instead of getting double the power like we were before, we're simply going to concentrate it on one Google site. We're still going to keep doing things the way we were doing. We're going to do the do we do. Nothing's changed, right? And so how, what, what do you do now? Well, I keep telling people, you copy paste. Whatever's on that classic site, move it to, move it to the new G site, like you said. Internal pages get moved over, copy paste. And iframe and big. It's a little bit of manual work, so don't do it. You should have a VA that's trained already in this process and does it. That's all it is. We are updating the training. We're updating the, the done for you solutions in the mgyb.co store. I already talked to the, to the VA. He's getting everything ready. We're hoping for release at the end of November because the, all of the videos have to be re-recorded, right? The training has changed. That, that's changed a lot, but we are going to do that. And we are going to change the done for you so that it matches what can be done now. But really nothing's changed. We're still going to be able to extend the drive stack. That's still going to be available, inner, inner pages on the new G sites. So guys, like Bradley said, click the button, move it over, and whatever Google doesn't do for you, then you just go and do, because you have you still have the old Google site available until September 1st. A lot of people missed this. September 1st, 2021. Yeah. So we got I over mean, a year. Come on, come on. Yeah. So yeah, we got over a year. So it's it's you know, it's not a, not a big deal. Um, and you know, Google will change that shit too in a few years, I'm sure. So <laughs> we just got to keep, uh, evolving with, you know, uh, run it rolling with the punches, so to speak. So Jim, uh, or Jim, or I don't know how, what that is, but <laughs> says, hello, gents questions. If I question, if I may, my main site is an e-com site and I'm looking to set up GMB listing for the site. Can I create a subdomain for each location or is it best to create a different website for each location instead? Many thanks in advance. Okay, uh, I would do a subdomain because and here's the thing. And we, we talked about this, I think even last week. First of all, if you got your main domain is your brand, then you, want, you don't want a different website for each location. If you're having multiple locations, if you're gonna be incorporating local into your e-com, which I know some people do, um, you don't want to have a separate website for each because you want to piggyback off of the brand authority that you are that you're building right through your main brand and brand authority is huge guys if you can build the brand then every subsequent location that you add will instantly benefit from the brand authority as opposed to if you had like completely separate websites and different you know domains for each location it's, it's treated as a different web asset, even if it might be part of the same entity. And it could create a whole lot of a nightmare trying to code all that stuff together and structure data and everything else if they're all separate websites. But if you have subdomains, then the authority that you build to the root through what you're doing to the root domain, as well as any locations on subdomains, or even they could be in subdirectories, depending on what the setup is on your e-com site. Uh, then you're going to accrue authority to that root domain so that anytime you add a new subdomain, it's going to instantly benefit from the authority created or accrued on the root domain. And the same would work as a subdirectory too. It just depends on how you have hosting set up. Um, I've always preferred to use subdomains, but as Marco was talking about last week, you know, fortunately I haven't, and I'm going to knock on wood, <laughs> I haven't caught any penalties in years. So we could probably get away with, not probably, but it could get away with doing subdirectories and that actually squeezes a little bit more power out of it than subdomains would. So that would be like a folder on your root domain where you would have a new website inserted if you were going to do it that way. And in fact, what I would suggest doing is if you're going to be setting up different websites, unless you're like duplicating the e-commerce site onto subdomains, what I would do is maybe just like one WordPress install on a subdomain, right, of your e-commerce site, and then use that one WordPress installation as the website for all of your different locations with just a separate location page. That way you're only managing one site, if that makes sense. Um, but again, it, it really depends on what it is that you're trying to do on each one of those local sites, so to speak. Are you trying to uh, reproduce the e-com site in its entirety 
or are you just using it for SEO purposes for like content marketing for each location based air, you know, for each location or what that's really going to determine what the ideal setup is. But like I said, I've always preferred subdomains in the past, but I haven't had a penalty in years for anything because we use the SEO shield. So I could get away with doing it all on one domain. Comments? No, I, I mean, I, I totally agree. And, and as you know, we always drink our own Kool-Aid, right? We always do what we don't just tell people to do what we do or, or to listen to what we say. We show them. And so what we did with mgyb.co is we, we're actually putting things in folders. The blog is in a folder. The store is in a folder. The shortener is in a folder. So we just went with it. And like the shortener gets hammered continuously, not just by us but people who use the shortener also. And so far, so good. And it powers up everything so much that everything benefits from it. Agreed. So, I, 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 and I mean, with subdomains, the problem is that, that it's treated as three different, well, as, as many different domains as you add subdomains. And so the power gets split up with the Lingbula. So if you're not, if you're not connecting everything correctly, the power isn't going to, isn't going to flow the way, the way that it's supposed to. When it's in a, in a subfolder or when it's in a folder inside the root, everything just flows naturally because everything's connected anyway. That's the difference. It's how you approach the power that you're going to push through the subdomains or through the folders where everything either flows or you have to smash everything through the subfolder. I mean, when we were throwing everything at the subfolders, including really bad stuff, yes, it was recommended to use the, the subdomain. But now, you know, we, we, we don't really care because everything goes through the SEO power shield anyway. That's correct. Yeah. All right. So BB's up with his list of questions. <laughs> I wouldn't expect anything else, BB. He says, hey, guys, can you order link building packages to URL shorteners like MGYB, tiny URL, Bitly, et cetera? Yes, of course you can. Um, caution about Bitly, though, is, and I, I don't know if tiny URL does it. I, don't, I haven't heard of it. But Bitly will occasionally turn a, a, a shortened URL through Bitly, they'll change it to a 302 redirect as opposed to a 301. So initially when you create it, it's a 301 redirect, or at least I think, you know, most of the time it is, but some, for some reason, Bitly, and unless they've changed, but several years, I mean, we know, I, I never used Bitly for SEO link shortening once I discovered this, which was several years ago. And I don't know if they still do it, but I just assume that they do which they'll turn a 301 link for for whatever reason, they'll add a nofollow tag to the link, turn it into essentially like a 302 link to where it won't pass page rank or pass link equity. So you got to be careful with that. That's why I don't recommend using Bitly. I don't know. They may have changed that. It's been years since uh, I've tested any of that, but uh, that's part of the reason I stopped using Bitly for it. But you've got the mgyb.co shortener. Um, uh, tiny URL should work. There's what Owly. I don't know if you can still do that. T.co, which was the Twitter, uh, but I don't know if that's a 302 redirect or what. But there's a ton of different um, shorteners out there. Just check check whichever ones you plan on using to make sure that they're 301s. Are there any other recommended ones, Marco? Oh, there's a whole lot of them. That there, there's lists all over of the best shorteners. Use MGYB. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> and those, it's crazy because even the the redirects through MGYB will often end up ranking. So you end up with the MGYB.co URL in the search results, which is kind of, it's kind of funny how that happens. The next question, Virginia SEO question. So he's talking about the uh, drive stack that I had built for that. Why aren't you ranking the big bamboo site instead of just the G site? Because I was targeting a specific keyword, Virginia SEO, SEO, Virginia, Virginia SEO agency, and my, at the time that I built that in 2015, I wasn't just a Virginia SEO agency. I would pretty much take, at that time, I was taking any type of home service contractor pretty much anywhere in the United States. So I was targeting a specific keyword, Virginia SEO agency and variations thereof. So I built that stack specifically for that reason. I didn't optimize my website for that because I didn't want to pigeonhole my website into that. And now, to be honest with you, the only thing I really market for at all is tree service uh, clients. So uh, it's, you know, Virginia SEO wouldn't, wouldn't have really applied to that. I've been thinking about <laughs> doing another drive stack specifically for tree service SEO and tree service marketing, tree service lead generation. So building that out and then, you know, promoting my own agency website with that. 
Um, but it's not something that I've done yet, but it is kind of on my radar to plan on doing at some point, maybe once all this, uh, new drive stack setup stuff gets completed in MGYB and we're going to be redoing the RYS reloaded training, uh, and doing a, a version three essentially. Um, and that'll be coming out towards the end of the year at some point. And, uh, maybe after all that's done, that'll be a good, a good case study that I can set up. So, but specifically, yeah. like I said, I was just targeting that one, that one keyword and I didn't want to optimize my website for that. I just wanted to do just the drive stack for that, which is what I've done. Big bamboo wasn't the target then. It wasn't part it wasn't. of the case study. It wasn't. It was it was the G site. That's, That's right. The, the whole point of, uh, of that case study was to rank the G site. Mission accomplished because it come well, we already had our five year anniversary of that thing ranking at least top ten. Yeah, so, what well, I mean that was in May and it was um shit, it was still one number one then. I think now it like I said, it had just slipped um slightly about three months ago and then it has come back since with just one press release um for most of the keywords anyways like virginia seo agency was the keyword that i promoted with the press release and there it is number one above the maps and you see because of my local ip it does pull in big bamboo marketing into the maps uh three pack because of my local ip i'm sure but if you stand by we'll, we'll look at a couple of the other keywords real quick there's really three that I was targeting, uh, SEO Virginia. And you can see that's number two. So around, like I said, about three months ago, it slipped. And I noticed it down between like position five and eight for any one of these keywords. But look, map, that maps is number one there. And then uh, all I did was one press release because I'm just fucking lazy, to be honest with you. I didn't order any link building to it or anything. Marco was like, hit it with a link building or uh uh, I said, or I said that Marco was like, hit it with a press release. I was like, yeah, I should do whatever. I did one press release and I used exact match anchor to link to the G site. The, the exact match anchor was Virginia SEO agency. And that pushed it right back up. The other one was um, Virginia SEO. Number one. So amazing what you can do with uh, a good press release and the drive stack. <laughs> you know, so they don't work. They press don't releases work. don't work. Move on. All right, last question from BB says, uh, well, the last one before somebody got a word in edgewise. <laughs> and then there's still yet another question. Oh, there's more. He's, he's up to six. Any more, guys? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Is there any purpose of doing multi-tiered syndication that each tier has one ring only for YouTube ranking instead of one year, one tier that has three rings? I don't understand that question. Is there any purpose of doing multi-tiered, say three or four syndication that each tier has one ring only for YouTube ranking instead of one tier that has three rings? I mean, okay, I see what you're saying. So Daisy chaining the, the, the uh, syndication networks together. Um, I know some people have taken our method, the syndication academy method and, and really done that and, and really expanded out with multiple tiers and all that. Here's why I don't like that. I don't like to ever go beyond two tiers. And that's because if anything breaks upstream, right, then everything downstream from it will stop working, right? And so that's part of, that's the only reason why. If an applet stopped working at one location, it could stop the trigger. So like, you know, on tier one, if something stops working, then all of the tiers downstream from that won't work. Does that make sense? So nothing will get published. And so it just becomes a management nightmare. That's why I prefer not to do it. The only type time I like to use two tier networks is, uh, for YouTube syndication anyways. So it's not usually a problem because it's um, usually the YouTube applets just continue to work almost like indefinitely. Um, but the, you know, when you're dealing with RSS feeds and things like that, I prefer only to stick with a sin single tier syndication network branded, a uh, branded net syndication network. Or if I was going to do two tier networks, again, it creates a little bit of a, for, for blog syndication, for RSS syndication, it can create a bit of a you know, management nightmare, because if anything happens with the RSS feeds, which often happens, guys, um, then you've got, you know, it, it, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work to track down or to re restart applets or correct things. So I prefer to do single, single branded syndication networks for blog syndication, for YouTube syndication, no more than two tier networks, but you can stack as many two tier networks on a YouTube channel as you prefer. I mean, as you want, the sky is the limit. It's never created an issue. But BB, you can get as creative as you want. Don't let me stop you. I'm just letting you know 
that the part of the reason I like to keep it simple is because we end up overcomplicating shit thinking that we're going to be smart as SEOs and it ends up becoming a nightmare to manage down the road. That's the whole point. Comments? Yeah, KISS, right? Keep it simple. Not, not you, uh, BB, but just in general, keep it simple, stupid. The simpler that we keep it, the better it is for us in the long run in case something breaks. If we, like Bradley said, when we start to get too complicated, when we start to make things just so complex that we don't know where it might break or if it does break, where to go to fix it, it can become a, a, an entire nightmare. You can spend so much time, like the time I spent 30 days looking for a comma when I was, when I was starting my, uh, to code in PHP. It was horrible. It was horrendous because I didn't know where it was. I had to go look through all of the code. And we're talking about thousands of lines of code. And all I, was, all I had out of place was a comma. So it was ridiculous. So you don't want to get into that. Yeah, I agree. Okay, Armin has a question specifically for Adam, and it looks like he's looking for somebody to review and give some tips about how to improve. I think he's, he's talking about conversion optimization. Conversion optimization. Yeah, conversion optimization. So, uh, so he's working on he's working on this ecom store. So he's looking for some tips on how to improve it. So that's the. Uh, well, I can tell you, thank you, Hernan. Site, site audits are something that we reserve only for the mastermind, um, only because this is a, you know, that's, that's what we reserve for our mastermind members. And it's also time consuming. So the one hour hump day hangouts, public setting isn't usually the best place for that. <laughs> when you come to the mastermind, you could ask Adam specifically for his own webinars to give you tips. You could ask for Hernan, you could ask for me because we all do our own separate webinars. And we'll do deep dives into and do site audits. Uh, we'll look at ad copy, you know, all different kinds of things and, and try to help you if, if you want in the mastermind. But it's not something that we do here, Armand. If you want, you can always post your request in the um, Facebook group as well and see if you can get some people to help you in there. Um, I'm not a conversion optimization specialist or am I a uh, e-com guy? So I, I wouldn't be able to comment on that. Anybody else want to make comment? So yeah, so besides besides what you what you're saying, Bradley, I think that um, Armand, I think that there's some um, there's some proven e-commerce um, templates out there that no matter what you throw at them, they will work. So you can start over there. Um, I think that there's some elements as well on a page, like any e-commerce page, without going in the weeds of that specific um, uh, example. But for instance, countdown timers or some scarcity timers, right? Scarcity as in only 15 left, uh, that type of stuff. So if you take a look at, if you take a look at whatever uh, John Mack is doing, so J-O-N-M-A-C, uh, his templates are heavily optimized. So you can go ahead and, and give it a shot, but usually, you know, like a green button, a green buy now button, and then some scarcity elements. And then those are, those are the two or three things that I'm seeing that are you know increasing the conversions, but they pretty much they all look pretty much the same. So if you see any drop shippers out there like doing any Facebook ads or whatever, you know their ads or, or their pages, they pretty much all look the same because they convert. You know. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like I've got a landing page that I template that I use from ClickFunnels for Google Ads for lead gen, uh, for for tree services, and I've used it for remodeling and HVAC and all kind for basically any type of home service. And it's the same damn template because it just works really well for Google ads and converting leads into, uh, you know, visitors into leads for, you know, and so I just use the same template over and over and over again. <laughs> you know, there's really no, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. You know what I mean? So the next question from BB again, it says, <laughs> you say that YouTube can be ranked just by activity slash user interaction, but how would you get the interaction in the first place without tiered syndications ranking the videos or embeds, which is basically tiered syndication and YouTube ads? I wouldn't. I'd use YouTube ads to get interaction immediately. <laughs> That's exactly what I do. Like I said, I'll push a video. I mean, here's the thing. If, if it's a video that falls within um, certain criteria, I can push it through some of my age channels that have aged syndication networks have been built up over time and that's going to give me the seo push but i'll be honest with you if i'm starting a new project for a client for example that has a new youtube channel i don't do any seo to it other than just on page which is set up the youtube channel and then obviously it gets link building to the channel as part of the SEO, syndication network and the seo shield and all of that but i don't build syndication networks for client youtube channels for example i don't do that at all anymore um because it's not like i don't i just don't 
do YouTube SEO anymore because I use Google, uh, Google ads for, for YouTube, for video, um, for all the traffic, you know, view and traffic and traffic generations that I uh, need for the YouTube video. So immediately once I publish a video for a client, we, I set up an ad campaign. So even if it's a brand new channel with virtually no SEO done to it other than on page, and it's the first video loaded on the channel, an ad is going to get set up with Google ads. So that's the engagement. And because I, again, I pretty much do nothing but local. I'm always setting up geographic targeting and I'm setting up audience targeting, preferably in market audience or life event audience. And if not one of those, then custom intent audience. And again, we have a training course that talks specifically about how to set that up, but that is, you know, I get the engagement. I mean, immediately once it's published, I set up an ad and within 24 hours, the ad is, uh, getting, you know, producing views to the video, which is the engagement signals that I'm looking for. Comment? No, I mean, we do it both ways because I, I ads, they work really well. YouTube ads and Google display, the display network, they work really well. It's Google giving you people, they're trusting you, right? So you're establishing the, the, the trust part of art. The activity is there. The relevance is there because you established the relevance through targeting the audience. That works perfectly well. Embeds and link building work also because it, it helps rank and it helps bring people. Whichever way you decide to do it, you're going to need people on that video, on that page, converting. If you don't accomplish that, it doesn't work. Even if you manage to rank the video, it's not yeah. going to last because people are going to bounce. People are not going to watch the video. People are not going to find what they're looking for. So if you don't match the user intent, you don't match the query if you don't have a, a solution for that person's problem then it's likely that some other video is going to overtake you because it matches the, the the user query and the intent better google is always looking to do that what we're just what we're trying to do is we're trying to to tell google whatever we have matches the user intent the user is going to find what they're looking for and that action is going to be accomplished if that person who lands on your page finishes the, the goal for which they went to the page in the first place, if they don't, then you're in trouble. It's not just getting people. It's not just getting interactions. It's, it's that person accomplishing that final goal on that web page, which is converting. How they convert, whatever that conversion is, it doesn't matter. There have to be conversions or else you're going to lose your spot to somebody who does it better. It's that simple. There you go. Okay, so I just posted the replay over to Jason because he was asking if the press release special offer is still going on. It is. I just pasted the replay again, just on the replay page. You don't have to watch the webinar if you don't want. The buttons to purchase the subscriptions, there's two levels, are right below the replay video. So yes, it is still going on. Um, I, I imagine it will go on till the end of this week. I don't know how long Jeremy's going to leave it open for specifically, but most likely till the end of the week. Um, so I jump on it if you're going to do it because this will be the last time. And he swears, he swears. And I believe him this time that it's going to be the last time that he does it because the platform is changing is shifting. He's doing some new stuff within uh, press advantage, like different distribution levels and all that kind of stuff. So this will be the last time that you can get the unlimited submission plan. Okay. So there you go. All right. The next question is, I have purchased the Jeffrey Smith SEO bootcamp and they promote a keyword called the network empire. Yeah. It's domain uh, digital marketers toolbox is really what it is. Um, would this tool replace the need for SEM rush? Yes. And no. So uh, to finish this comment, he says, I'm trying to keep my cost down and everyone wants a monthly fee. And if I purchase everything, then my monthly cost is way too high. You know, and I understand that um, digital marketers toolbox is fantastic for a keyword research. And it's also good for if you're building a lot of sites that you're going to need silo architecture for, it's good for that because you can literally map out the site in the digital marketers toolbox. And then you create a file that you can uh, upload with a plugin or you can, um, yeah, you can, you know, basically import the file, the XML file from digital marketers toolbox into a WordPress install. And it will literally build the site out with all the silo architecture, the way that you mapped it out in uh, the digital marketers toolbox itself. Um, it's really, really, really good for keyword research for setting up silo built, you know, uh, websites built with silo architecture. Uh, but it doesn't do backlink analysis and all of that, which SEM Rush does. 
Does that make sense? So SEM Rush has a lot of other features that like, you know, brand monitoring and all these other things that uh, Digital Marketer Toolbox does not. To be 100% transparent, I do have a um, subscription to Digital Marketer's Toolbox. I've been using it a lot actually lately for keyword stuff for silo uh, sites that I'm building. Um, I've got several projects going on right now that I've used it on and it's really good for that. So, but it is expensive just to be, be clear, it is expensive. So if you have a limited budget and you need the ability to also analyze backlinks and that sort of thing, then probably SEM Rush is the better route to go. Um, I would say D uh, Digital Marketers Toolbox would be more for somebody that's more established that has perhaps a bigger budget to mess with um, but it is a very powerful tool. There's quite a learning curve though. I'm, I, I got to tell you, I, I still don't know how to use it entirely <laughs> because there's quite a learning curve to it. Any comments? Yeah, this is our deep, our deep keyword research gig at mdyv.co. It, it, it's on hold right now because we're updating it. We're retraining all of our VAs. So that's a little bit on hold, but it's going to open again. And once it does, it'll be available and we deliver the niche like right to you. Yeah. Uh, you can go back and forth with our VAs as far as the, the, your, your niche, the, the, the broadest keyword, and then the three categories that you would like. I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll accept that, but then we go in and we find everything that's related to the niche. And when I say relevance, just because something is irrelevant in your niche, you consider it ir irrelevant. That doesn't mean it's irrelevant to the bot. So we'll give you a lot of things that, that could help you out with creating relevance which that then goes in the G side and drive stack, right? To push relevance over to your main site. So don't think of it as, no, I can't use this. That if, if the keywords are given to you, you can then submit those for when your drive stack and G side are built. So they add relevance to everything you do at, at that point, at, at that part of your tier one. So that we're driving even more relevance to something that's already created with relevance in mind. So how good is that? I mean, just, you just, kind of stacking relevance right at this point so that's something else to look at yeah and here's the uh you know marco's talked about this the keyword research that we offer at mgyb is from the top down so it instead of from the bottom up so you know a lot of a lot of seos talk about targeting long tails and there's there, there's a reason for that but trying to get traction on you know long tails first and then working your way up towards the market level keyword and that kind of stuff well uh, the keyword research at MGYB is, is much like digital marketers toolbox in that it looks at the entire market and it's the, it's from the, it's the, the lists are built, the keyword lists are generated from the top down. And that's what digital marketers toolbox does very, very quickly. Uh, is it just, you know, within a few minutes, it can show you where the money is flowing within a particular market, but it's, it's expensive. And there's a little bit of, like I said, there's a bit of a learning curve with it and I'm not knocking it. I use it personally. So it's, it's a great tool, but it does require some time to learn how to use it. And it is, it is a bit expensive. So just keep that in mind. Uh, Wayne, social buzz me. What's up, Wayne? He says, Marco has sunshine 365 and 24 seven. Holy crap. That sucks. No, <laughs> no, no are you not, so angry? Not 20, not 24 seven. That, that's the, uh, the North and South pole. We don't get 24 seven. Unfortunately, we, we do have night here, Wayne. It's called night. <laughs> So and you have a rainy season too, don't you? We do have a rainy season and, and we're, we're in the middle of the rainy season. Come get some, come get some, come get some of this guys. All you got to do is get to your pole food. That's it. All right. So, uh, next would be, uh, this one. <laughs> hey guys, I'm new here. Going to stay tuned. Well, welcome. You can always come here and ask questions. That's what we're here for every Wednesday. Dan says, can you add schema to a YouTube video? I don't think that you can. I've never tried it. The only way I would know to do it, which I don't know if it would work or not, would be to edit the video file before you upload it to YouTube and try to embed structured data, which I haven't, into like the comment section as EXIF data, right? As like uh, metadata, like like you would. So there's a there's a program. I don't, I don't know that that would work though, to be honest with you. That's the only place I could think of doing it. But there's a program called MP3 tag. That It's an old program, but it still works. This right here, it's free to download and you can actually uh, add metadata to MP, MP3 and MP4 files. So video files. So essentially you can go in and add keywords and 
tags and con in the comment section. And so you, know, you can do all kinds of cool stuff like you would be like you would be optimizing an image, a photo to upload to a WordPress site, right? With metadata, uh, coordinates, you know, exit data, location data, all that kind of stuff. You can do the same thing with MP3 tag to video files. So this is something I've used over the years. Again, I don't do much SEO, YouTube SEO stuff anymore, guys, because I just use paid, paid traffic to, to accomplish what I want to accomplish. But when I was doing a lot of YouTube SEO, this is what I would use to add metadata to the file before uploading it to YouTube. Okay. So I don't know, Marco, do you know if you can add um, structured data to like as metadata, if it would stick? I don't know if no. it would. I don't know. I don't know if it would. We'd have to get into the code in YouTube to be able to add schema, right? And YouTube is not going to allow that. Come on, guys. You know that. Yeah. Now, the next best thing then would be to iframe the YouTube video on your website and then to use video schema on your website. That's correct. For that video. The, the source is going to get all the credit for this, right? Because that's the way that iframes work. And the thing is, it's going to bounce back to your page with that YouTube video embedded in it. So why not do it that way? If, 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 if you really want to get this to work, if you want to get the schema right, and if you want to add schema, the place to do it is on your website because you have at uh, schema.org the way to add video schema to your website, right? To your website, uh, to the code. So that's how you would do it. Here's the one I was looking for, uh, Systrix. So systrix.com, they have um, under resources, they have free tools or whatever and video rich snippet generator for schema.org markup. This works for pretty good. If you want to just generate um, video object markup, it works pretty good. You can use this because all you got to do is paste the URL in there and then it spits out the code and you can add that to your, um, you know, into the content body of your page or post and it will mark it up, which is pretty cool. Yeah. So, there you go. Okay. Next would be Pablo. What's up, Pablo? He says, hey, guys, since we need to mirror a website structure on the GMB, we should post the same post like on Money Site. I'm posting one post per week on the Money Site. GMB needs more posts per week. How to resolve that? Where to get more posts? Uh, can I do it this way? I have long form articles on the silo page with jump links. Can I break up one section and make a couple of posts on GMB? Top piece will link to the Money Site. Yeah, of course you can, Pablo. That's good thinking. See, I love it. Love it when you guys... Uh, come here with, you know, and, and have already kind of thought through, that's absolutely a great way to do it. And here's the thing, guys, you don't need to like, like, so what my, my VA does is every time she publishes a blog post for, um, you know, a, a, a local project that when we're also providing GMB posting service, because some clients I don't, but for most of them, I do, we always do a, a, a publish a GMB post that links back to the the blog post, right? And we use the same featured image and then we don't use, you know, her posts are, excuse me, curated posts and they're usually way beyond the 1500 character limit the GMB posts have. So we just take like the opening paragraph, for example, uh, which essentially, you know, talks about what the, the, uh, the blog post is gonna be about anyways. And then there's the learn more button, which links back to the blog post URL. And that's what we do. Um, however, like if there's, you know, there's a lot of, for example, for clients that might only be getting, let's say one post per week, but we're doing five GMB posts per week, then it's only one blog post that's going to get highlighted in, uh, in as a GMB post. So then there's got to be four other posts created so for, for the week, right? And so typically she'll do what, what you just mentioned. She'll go grab some content from one of the main pages instead of just a post and link back to that on the page itself. And then, you know, grab an image that's relevant to whatever it, the topic is, add that, and then link back to the money site page or to the root domain or whatever, a tier one entity asset, it doesn't matter. But just grab content from the existing website or I've given her a bunch of, and she, you know, over the years has developed them out a lot more, but I gave her some templates that are basically like call to action templates that just say, hey, you know, if that, and, and a list of keywords, which and every one of my client projects, I have a, you know, a spreadsheet, a Google, Google sheet that has a list of target keywords and then target URLs. And so she'll go right on down the list and just grab one of my GMB post templates and swap out a keyword because it's all tokenized. In other words, you know, I, I created a, a, a um, you know, notepad file 
with a bunch of GMB post templates in there that have tokens that can just be swapped out with the find and replace function. And it makes it real easy to produce consistently good GMB posts where we're constantly targeting keywords that have already been identified as keywords that are producing traffic or have the potential to produce traffic. Where do you get those keywords? We'll go to GMB insights, for example, and look at the keyword, the search query report or search term report at the very top of GMB insights. And you can go back to three months or like, you know, the previous quarter and look at all the keywords that have brought um, traffic to the GMB. And those are great keywords to target, even like the near me keywords. So like one of the things that we use in our templates a lot is like, did you just search for and then put in quotes? Uh, so that's the first line in the GMB post text, right? Is did you just search for like tree removal service near me? And that way you can start targeting like those near me keywords in a way that reads well and it makes sense. And it will look no further because, you know, Culpeper Tree Service provides tree removal services to Culpeper County, Virginia. Call us for a free estimate. Then there's the, you know, brand name plus phone number and then the link back to whatever it is that we're linking to. Does that make sense? So, yeah, there's think about also day, silo linking your GMB post together. We talk about this in local GMB Pro extensively. But all of that. So if, if you're thinking about taking long form content and breaking it up into a series of posts, GMB posts, which is a great strategy, then just think about how you're going to link those posts back to each other, as well as back to the original content source. And jump links is a great way to do that. It's a great question, Pablo, and it sounds like a great strategy. You're on the right track. Any comments on that, Marco? Yeah, just something real quick before we go. Number one, original content works really well everywhere sometimes you can't get it but the more creative you can be the better it works one and two original images nothing nothing in your post is going to work better than an image taken and uploaded at the location now if you can't do that then of course you have to go to the things where that we teach inside uh local gmb pro which is you know how, how to silo it how to get unlimited local images how to do the post how to get creative with with posts how to interlink the post so that you can get the most out of your GMB. But I can tell you right now from everything that I'm doing inside GMB that nothing is going to work better than tweaking that content and giving the bot something original for, for that search query and adding that, that, that local image. It, it cinches everything in really well. There you go. Um, okay, so Nigel's asking, best way to send targeted email and text messages to 50 plus people where they may be blocking video blocking on email. I'm aware of a GIF with a YouTube hyperlink method, but wanted to know the best way to facilitate sending videos plus short message via text and email that may be better than one by one. FYI, have targeted and permissioned list and made separate videos for each of the 50 people. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna point out a couple of resources here. Now, first of all, there's one that I'm testing right now. Um, in fact, I, I, I talk about this in the mastermind, but I, there is no affiliate link for this, guys, but it's called dub.com, D-U-B-B.com. And I just signed up for them a couple of weeks ago, and they've got full on, it's a, you know, they're, they're, it's a video email marketing system, right? And it's, it's a full on platform that has SMS, it's got emailing, it's, you know, depending on what level of subscription you have. It'll do, uh, you know, uh, there's uh, workflow automation. So essentially you can create automated campaigns where it'll send a video email. And then, you know, it'll, if, if nobody clicked on it, you can 24 hours later, send an SMS text message. And then, you know, and it, you can have different triggers where if they click and they watch to a certain point, it sends a different message. And like, so it's, it's full on automated marketing platform for video emails and, uh, prospecting and everything else. So it's, it, it looks to be incredibly powerful. And I just started playing with it because um, I've got some uh, lead gen assets that I need to monetize. And so I'm going to be doing some additional training on Dub in the mastermind. And then I'm going to, once I have it wrapped up nicely and polished up, I'm going to add that to our video lead gen system training. Okay. So I would highly encourage if you've got a lot, it sounds like um, Nigel, you're doing a lot of video email prospecting, something like this is actually way better in my opinion, even though I haven't really put it through the, the, the test yet. Um, it looks to be a hell of a lot more efficient than the way that I have always done it in the past, which was using different services and, and kind of duct taping them together, so to speak, with Zapier and, and using different apps and services, okay? Because that 
it, 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 uh, you end up having a lot of setup time to get all of those apps to integrate and work properly. And then if anything breaks, it becomes a kind of a pain in the ass to go troubleshoot and find where it broke and fix it. All of that can be done. That's how I've done it over the years using Zapier primarily as like, you know, the, the tool to connect all those apps together, but it is a bit of a pain in the ass. And when, when you, when you end up, um, totaling all of the expenses for different services, including Zapier, which is, you know, at the minimum $20 a month to have a decent Zapier account, uh, it ends up costing more than just having a dub account to begin with. So that's why I signed up for this because I've got some prospecting campaigns that I'm going to be running in the next couple of weeks. Um, and so I want to kind of document my process through this and in the, in the mastermind, they get that stuff basically in real time. But once it's done, I'll have it polished up and I'm going to add that as an additional module inside of the video lead gen system uh, program. Now, that said, there are a couple of ways that you can do what you were talking about. I like to use gmas.co as my mailing service for when I'm connected through G Suite. So I've done a ton of prospecting using gmas.co. Um, if you look at the pricing, there is a couple of different types here. Um, I like to use it for um, G Suite accounts. Pretty much anytime I set up any kind of email, like prospecting campaign, guy, I, now I use G, G Suite anyway, so that I'm using the Gmail servers. It's a paid account, so you get higher sending limits, all that kind of stuff. You can add your own SPF records and all the kind of stuff, which higher deliverability, higher inboxing rate. I like to use gmas.co for that. However, there's another really good service out there that I used to use before I started using um, GMAS and that's called quickmail.io. So again, they're, they're similar type functioning, uh, but you can, you can basically load up campaigns with individual you know, recipients, have different messages going to different, but it will automate everything and it will send out follow -up, automated follow-ups. It will do link, uh, you know, uh, open tracking, link click tracking, reply tracking. Uh, there's, again, a lot of these will integrate with CRMs or Zapier and that kind of stuff. So you can, you know, cause other, you just set up automated uh, marketing, you know, workflows essentially. Uh, so you can do all kinds of really cool stuff with either one of these, gmas.co or quickmail.io. But I prefer, well, it looks like Dub is going to be the platform that I'm going to be using going forward for all of my video email prospecting because it integrates, like it has everything right in the same dashboard that I would have, that I've ever wanted, that I've always set up using Zapier and multiple different services. That makes sense. Okay. So I would highly encourage you to check this one out. I don't have any training for that, for that yet, but they've got really, really good training resources um, on, uh, at Dub alone. So everything you could need to already be here. Any comments? No. Okay. So try those. Uh, Lana says, Hey guys, I don't, I don't think we, we can get to those. We're way past the hour. Oh my God. Holy crap. I lost track of time. Yeah, you did. <laughs> time flies when you're having fun. Well, it is episode 300. <laughs> it is 300. So let's, so give so them more. I don't, I don't care. We're 12 weeks away from our six year anniversary, guys. Do you believe that? Six years giving you an hour six free years. every week in YouTube. Six years of answering your questions. No bullshit, no fluff, just the good stuff. Well, listen, guys, I wish I could answer the rest of the questions, but I didn't realize how late we were. So time flies when you're having fun. Great questions, Nigel. Uh, everybody else, appreciate y'all being here. Marco, thanks for sticking around even past the hour. All right, man. No problem. See you guys next week. Bye, everyone.